Hey guys, Truth Because Jitsu, we're going to go over the baseball bat choke tonight. So, not only the choke itself, we will cover that in detail from at least one situation where it's used. There's all sorts of ways that it can be used, both top, bottom. I've seen it used from bottom mount. I've seen it used when somebody's on your back. It's a fairly versatile grip once you figure out how to use it. But for the simplicity of this video, we'll go over one of the more common fundamental uses of it when somebody's passing your guard. It's a very, very powerful choke. So understand that when you're going to use this in the gym, it'll pass people out. I've seen it several, several times when like, people will try to hang out in this choke for two or three seconds and they go to limp. So if you're being attacked with it, understand you have a very short timer. Uh, also, if you're putting it on, pay attention to your partner. If they go limp, you let go of that choke because they're out. This thing happens a lot. Uh, we're also going to cover uh, a simple defense to it if you're being attacked on top um, that involves a counter attack. But also, we're going to go like two steps down the rabbit hole on this is if you're being countered with this or defended, you're on bottom choking or defending with this defense, how to re up on that choke and get it back. All right, so for the purpose of this video, we're going to go over, my partner is trying to pass my guard right now with a knee cut pass. He's already got it to the point that I'm basically just clamping onto his ankle back here. He's got his knee all the way past. I know from this position that he has a very, very high likelihood of passing my guard. We're basically just playing a waiting game right now. Um, I'm going to set myself up just in case he passes my guard with this baseball bat choke. And uh, one thing about this, I know some people just call it a baseball choke. And um, I find it informative to say baseball bat choke because the, the idea, the analogy here is like holding a baseball bat. So that's going to inform you how you put your hands. If you just say baseball choke, it really doesn't mean anything. It's just a name. But baseball bat, if you can remember that when you're trying to set your grips, it'll really help you remember how to do it. Because it's not like a cross choke. This, this is where a lot of people screw up is they try to set up like diagonal grips here like a cross choke would. This is straightforward, okay? Just like you're grabbing a baseball bat. The first one I'm going to set up is thumb in. I'm going to put it right like this. So unlike a cross choke where I'm coming here and he can feel something against his throat, he knows this is a threat, okay? Even just one grip, he knows that he has to check this. This just feels like a grip and not even a very good one. I'm not pushing or pulling very hard. I'm just kind of hanging onto his lapel. I got the thumb in and I'm right just back of his spine, right? I'm not right over top of his spine, but maybe like an inch or two back of it here. Now, as he passes, I'm going to bring this one fingers in, just like I'm holding a baseball bat on this side like that. I want to make sure that I have like maybe three or four inches in between my hands. I'm going to pull it down here so you can see like that. So we've got just a few inches in between the hands, not too far like this and not so close that I've got no actuation in between. What I'm thinking uh, when you hold this, think of it like nunchucks, like you want this little bit of fabric here to act like the chain in between the two handles. It needs to have movement. So there's two to three inches, three to four maybe, will be all that you need. So I've had this thumb in by the spine a little back. This one shot in, now that he's passed. Now I've got him in a situation where I can turn this into a choke. What I'm gonna do, either A, he's going to turn hips down into a side control position, and I can finish right here. So we're gonna turn about 90 degrees so we can see it. But what I need to do with my hands here, or more, more to the point with my arms, is the choking arm is the one that's underneath his body, and I need to get that elbow in between his shoulder and my arm right here, in between this space. I don't want to bring it under his armpit. That's going to stop my choking. He's going in front of his arm right here. And the action here, once I have my grips, is I'm trying to bring this elbow up to the sky, like a big uppercut, and turn my belly direction down to the ground, like this. That's where we get the choke. Okay, don't try to hang out right here and just bring that elbow to the sky and just use all your muscle and strength. He can stop that if he's, if he's stubborn about it. What we're doing is trying to drag his body over our body in this direction, which adds his body weight to the choke right here. And oftentimes I've seen it where somebody will try to follow the pressure of that choke and let their body drag over top and you can even reverse the situation and finish from top. So that's if they switch their hips into a side control position. If they're not switching their hips, this is where we get into our defense to the baseball bat choke. Okay, so I've passed, I realize that I'm in a baseball bat choke. What I don't want to do is turn my hips down this direction. If he fires that through, then I'm in all sorts of trouble. There's a very, very small chance that I'm going to get out of it at that point. When I realize what's happened and I've, I've gotten into this bad situation, 
I'm going to stay in Keskitami or Scarfold position here, and I want to lean back like this so it makes it very hard for him to bring his arm into the position that he needs. This is going to be a staying position. As long as I can keep his back flat on the ground, and as long as he's intent on finishing that baseball bat choke from here, this will defend as long as you need it. Okay, we'll go into the counter to what I'm doing after this, but if I'm the one defending right here, I can keep my weight back so he can't get this choke. And what I'm gonna do is take this shin and insert it on his armpit, on this near arm by grabbing his arm right here by about the tricep and elbow area. I'm gonna slide this one in. I don't wanna lean forward at all. So stay back, slide this one in right here, and then bring this over top right here to counter with an arm bar. So one more time, that defense is, I get into Keskitami, I need to lean back on this to make sure he can't get the choke. I'm gonna grab around the, the arm, uh, at the elbow or tricep, this shin comes into the armpit, and then I bring this over and just lean back for my arm bar finish. Now, if I'm the one that's trying to put the baseball bat choke on and my partner switches to Keskitami, or they never switch down to side control to begin with once they pass, I don't want to try to finish that choke from here. Like I was showing in that last one, I'm just setting myself up to use strength and perhaps even get countered with an arm bar or some other sort of attack or transition. What I need to do is change this to the point that I can actuate this arm in the direction I need again. And there's a couple ways we can go about that. The first way is, like I said before, like I'm holding on to nunchucks here, I've got that chain that's basically at the back of his neck. I'm going to use that to basically pull him forward like that with that lapel on the back of his neck, breaking his posture. And now I'm going to turn using my legs across the ground this direction and then turn my elbow out. And then the same thing, this elbow goes to the ceiling, my belly comes down to the ground, I'm going to finish that choke. One other option from here, and this will be similar to a uh, Keskitami escape that we've gone over in a previous video, I'll link that one on here a little bit later, is when I'm here, I can take the top with basically the same movements with my legs. Instead of just coming here and throwing the choke on, I'm going to move until he, his base starts pushing so far back that I can come up top. And when I come up on top, his back hits the ground, I'm going to come up to my feet and go north-south on him, dropping this elbow to the ground here. It's a very fast choke when you add gravity to it. So again, when I'm going to hit this one, taking it to the top, I don't want to try to finish from here. I'm wasting my strength. I'm going to walk away, tip him back, come up north-south and drop that elbow to the ground. So there you have a good introduction to the baseball bat choke. This is, like I said, a very, very versatile gripping position that can be used for all sorts of other situations. Um, you can check those out. I know that Majid Hage became very, very popular for this uh, a few years ago, maybe four or five years ago. Uh, he hit it on everybody from every position, so uh, he's a good resource to try to find some tutorial information out of him. Uh, but this will get you started, not only on the attack, but also defending it if you need to, countering it from the defense, and even countering the defense. So I hope that helps guys. Drop some suggestions for future videos in the comment section, and we'll see you on the next one.